Welcome to this lecture about ultrasound imaging of acute appendicitis, pearls and pitfalls. Acute appendicitis is a common abdominal emergency, with a lifetime prevalence of about 7%. The clinical diagnosis of acute appendicitis is a challenge to emergency physicians and surgeons. Classic symptoms of acute appendicitis are well described. However, up to one-third of patients with acute appendicitis have atypical presentations. Ultrasound should be the first-line imaging modality for diagnosis of acute appendicitis, as it has excellent specificity, both in the pediatric and adult patients. The symptoms of acute appendicitis are frequently nonspecific and overlap with various other diseases. Acute appendicitis occurs at any age, but usually between 10 and 30 years. The cause of acute appendicitis is unknown, but there are probably many contributing factors. The primary cause is probably luminal obstruction, which may result from fecalith, foreign bodies, parasites, and primary neoplasms or metastasis. These are four cases of suspected acute appendicitis. On the image on upper right side of the screen, here is the appendix measuring about 9 millimeters in diameter. It has a very thick hypoechoic wall. On the image on upper left side of the screen, the appendix is distended, measuring about 8 millimeters in diameter. It has normal wall thickness, and shows echogenic material within its lumen. The third case here, the appendix measuring about 9 millimeters in diameter. It shows normal wall thickness with fluid-filled lumen. In the last case here, the appendix measuring about 10 millimeters in diameter. It shows normal wall with its lumen is filled with echogenic material. Which of these is actually acute appendicitis? The answer is none of them. You will know the reason why these cases are not acute appendicitis throughout the lecture. Ultrasound is the first imaging study of choice in acute appendicitis. Graded compression technique is used with the high-frequency linear probe. You take images in transverse and longitudinal planes and you scan from the iliac crest to the bladder. When you are going to do the examination, first ask the patient where is the site of maximum tenderness and have them point with one finger. Because self-localization helps to find the appendix easily. Don't give up too soon, search where the pain is indicated and also search systematically. Try to find the ileocecal valve and from the ileocecal valve go down for 2 or 3 centimeters and usually that is the location of the appendix. Compress the ileum and cecum to look behind it. In retrocecal appendicitis, move the probe to the flank and look behind the cecum or try to push the appendix towards the probe by placing the other hand in the flank and pushing anterior. In deep pelvic appendicitis in women, you can use endovaginal ultrasound. Make sure that the appendix is entirely visualized including the blind ending tip. Because if you had tip appendicitis you will miss it if you didn't visualize the entire appendix. The appendix is long and thin and it is filled with faces and bacteria. It has a narrow lumen that easily obstructs. The normal appendix has a mean length of 8 to 10 millimeters and mean thickness of about 4 millimeters. On ultrasound, it has gut signature. It has mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria, and lymphoid tissue. And it even has its own mesentery, which can be visualized especially when it's inflamed. It is located in the right lower abdominal quadrant at McBurney point. There are some variations, it can be in the left upper abdomen when there is a malrotation. It can be retrocecal, and it can be in the inguinal canal. Let's have a look how the appendix looks like on ultrasound. This is the gut signature. 
You will find it in any part of the digestive tract, and also the appendix. These are alternating layers of white and black. From the center, the white layer is the interface between the mucosal layers. Then this blackish layer is the mucosa. Then the white layer is the submucosa. Then the black layer is the muscular layer. And the outer white layer is the serosa. As we can see, the same layers are seen in the ilium. What is the important difference between the ilium and appendix? The appendix does not show inner folds of mucosa, while the ilium shows folds. And why the mucosa is thick in the appendix, because of the lymphoid tissue. There is a lot of lymphoid tissue in the mucosa of the appendix which is shown as physiological thickening of the mucosa. So, the normal sonographic appearance of the appendix is that it has inner hypoechoic mucosa without folding. Its diameter is less than 6 mm and it is compressible. Sometimes it contains air, sometimes stool. And there is normal mesenteric fat surrounding it. When the lumen of the appendix is obstructed, the appendiceal mucosa keeps on secreting mucus, causing dilatation of the lumen, which obviously has consequences for its vascular supply. The intraluminal pressure exceeds the arterial pressure in the appendix wall, with subsequent ischemia and necrosis of the wall, and further perforation. And this is the sequence of events in acute appendicitis. Luminal obstruction. High intraluminal pressure. Ischemia and necrosis. Perforation An inflammatory response Ultrasound features of acute appendicitis We see non-compressible blind ending tube, greater than 6 mm in diameter. It is fluid filled. When it's non-perforated the submucosal lining is intact. You may see an appendicolith. And you can see periappendiceal fluid. This is a case of acute appendicitis, as you can see, this is a blind ending tubular bowel structure that arises from the cecum. This is the echogenic submucosa, if you see that intact, the appendix is likely non-perforated. You can see appendicolith which is echogenic focus with shadowing. It is seen in about 65% of cases. It has specificity of about 87% for acute appendicitis. One important thing to note, that if you see appendicolith within inflamed appendix, there is a higher risk of perforation. How to measure the appendix? Always measure the appendix from the outer border of muscularis layer, to the other side outer border of muscularis layer. In the literature, the cutoff point is 6 mm. This is not reliable, because you may have the appendix normally distended with air or fluid, with no secondary signs of inflammation, and patient is asymptomatic. Also in children, the appendix can be large due to lymphoid hyperplasia. The appendix may be small less than 6 mm, but the surrounding tissues showing secondary signs of appendicitis. So, appendicitis is very unlikely if diameter is less than 6 mm. And 6 mm threshold is highly sensitive, but not highly specific. The causes of false negative diagnoses include tip appendicitis, an aberrant location of the appendix, such as a retrocecal position, and perforation. In tip appendicitis, the inflammation is localized to the distal end of the appendix, the proximal appendix being normal. This pitfall can be minimized by imaging the entire length of the appendix. As you can see in this case of acute appendicitis, the appendix is coming of the cecum, the proximal part of the appendix looks good. The inflammation starts in the tip of the appendix, looking at the tip, it appears dilated measuring about 8 mm, with increased echogenicity of the surrounding fat. So you should visualize the entire appendix. 
A retrocecal appendix can be difficult to visualize, particularly if the ascending colon and distal small bowel contain large amounts of air that cannot be easily compressed. In retrocecal appendicitis, move the probe to the flank and look behind the cecum. Or try to push the appendix towards the probe by placing the other hand in the flank and pushing anterior. The majority of appendices are intraperitoneal, medial to the psoas muscle, but some of them will be retrocecal, seen in the paracolic gutter, lateral to the psoas muscle. Here is a case of retrocecal appendicitis. As you can see in this case, the appendix is well visualized by posterior approach through the flank. It is seen enlarged with increased echogenicity of the surrounding fat, denoting acute appendicitis. If appendicitis is not treated within a reasonable time, ischemic necrosis may occur, and appendiceal perforation can follow. Perforation occurs within 24 to 48 hours after onset of symptoms. It occurs in 20 to 40 percent of cases. The diagnosis of perforation can be difficult as the appendiceal lumen decompresses, and hence becomes non-identifiable at sonography. In this scenario, the diagnosis is based on identification of secondary signs, such as loss of echogenic submucosal lining, increased periappendiceal echogenicity, abscess formation, thickening of adjacent to peristaltic bowel loops and interloop fluid. Appendiceal abscess appears as a hypoechoic or complex mass with internal echoes and septations. Occasionally, the appendiceal stump is displayed as an echogenic tubular structure projecting into the hypoechoic fluid-filled abscess. Color flow Doppler sonography usually demonstrates flow in the wall of the abscess and adjacent soft tissues. Causes of false positive diagnoses include mistaken the enlarged appendix in some conditions for appendicitis. These conditions include lymphoid hyperplasia of the appendix, fecal distension of the appendix, mucosal of the appendix, and enlarged appendix in patients with cystic fibrosis. Several conditions mostly in pediatrics are associated with non-inflammatory enlargement of the appendix. Here is an example. This is a four years old boy. He has an ultrasound done for an issues unrelated to lower abdominal quadrant. And here is the appendix measuring about nine millimeters in diameter. So you look at it, what a large appendix, should it be appendicitis? If you look at the wall of the appendix, it is very thickened, it has a cobblestone pattern, and there is nothing in the lumen of the appendix, and this represents lymphoid hyperplasia of the appendix. The intestinal lymphoid tissue is normally located in the mucosal layer of the small bowel and appendix, appearing as lymphoid nodules or lymphoid infiltrate. When the lymphoid nodule is prominent in the intestinal wall, it is referred to as intestinal lymphoid hyperplasia. Lymphoid hyperplasia of the appendix is frequently noted in pediatric patients. It is a benign reversible enlargement of the lymphatic tissue of the appendiceal wall, secondary to viral or bacterial infections. On sonography, the appendix is enlarged, with hypoechoic pseudonodular mucosal thickening, representing enlarged lymphoid follicles within the appendiceal wall. The appendix is not compressible, with its lumen is not distended. The soft tissues around the appendix are normal. And this is often accompanied by mesenteric lymph node enlargement. Another case. Seven years old boy with right abdominal pain. The appendix here measuring about 9 millimeters in diameter, but if you look at the wall it appears normal in thickness, with the periappendiceal soft tissues looks normal. The lumen of the appendix is filled with this echogenic non-shadowing material. This is an example of fecal distension of the appendix. And in this cases, can be associated with appendiceal colic, 
they can have pain that simulate appendicitis. The appendix can get large up to 1 cm in diameter. The feces can become anisphysated and the appendix is non-compressible. The appendiceal wall and periappendiceal soft tissues are normal. This is a 20 years old male with chronic abdominal pain. As you can see here, the appendix is enlarged measuring about 9 mm in size, with its lumen is filled with fluid. The appendiceal wall appears normal, and the periappendiceal tissues also normal. This represents mucosal of the appendix. So mucosal of the appendix is mucus distension of the appendix. Most often seen as an incidental finding, but 25% present with symptoms mimicking acute appendicitis. The wall of the appendix is normal, or thin due to distension of the appendix. No inflammation of the surrounding periappendiceal soft tissues. Occasionally associated with neoplasm. Neoplasm usually identified incidentally on histopathology. This is nine years old boy with cystic fibrosis, and this is incidentally noted in the right lower abdomen, you think this is acute appendicitis. The appendix measuring about 9 mm in diameter. So, like in fecal distension, there is intraluminal accumulation of mucoviscous material. The appendiceal diameter can get large up to 14 mm. Again, the appendiceal wall and periappendiceal soft tissues are normal. Abortive or spontaneously resolving appendicitis. It requires a clinical history of acute appendicitis and rather sudden relief of symptoms in early stage of the disease. Ultrasound showed an inflamed appendix, returning to normal within days. Recurrence within two years is about 50%. With every attack there is a higher chance of appendiceal perforation. So. Our policy is to do immediate appendectomy even if symptom-free.